The game takes place after World War I in an alternate 1930s. It's a globetrotting adventure. You uncover a global conspiracy by uh, this group called the Banished Court. When the uh, Lamplighters League last fought the Banished Court, they were wiped out except for uh, one man named Pelham Locke. And uh, he realized he no longer had the best of the best, and so he had to recruit the best of the worst. And that's the characters you play with in the Lamplighters League. My name is John Everest, and I am the composer for the Lamplighters League. And I am at Abbey Road, and we're recording uh, the soundtrack for Hairbrain Scheme's new game. The first piece that I wrote was the main theme, which is kind of a, a little suite of music that goes from uh, some references to the jazz of the 1930s, but also has this kind of epic, uh, adventurous tone to it. Because I think in general, this game, it covers a lot of dark tones, but I think ultimately it's a story about larger than life adventure. Those are the moments that you live for as a composer, when you kind of throw a dart at the board and you're landing in a place that is inspiring artists and other people on the team. That's when the wheels start turning and the artists are inspiring me and then I'm inspiring the artists and it becomes this kind of flywheel of creativity that unfolds into something bigger than you thought at the beginning of the project. Making video games is the most collaborative thing that I could think of. There's art, and there's engineering, there's design, there's test, there's production, and then there's sound and music. And what we attempt to do at Hairbrain Schemes with every game we make is to immerse people into a new world that this whole group of us collaborates to create. I think working within a brand new IP, brand new game world, is incredibly exciting. You know, as a composer, it gives you a lot of freedom to draw on your own influences. These things that sound very heavy, fascism, you know, the, the fall of humanity, essentially. But how do we cover that and also make it fun and make it enjoyable to watch these flawed characters uh, kind of fumble their way into saving the world? One of the things I love about this score is that at moments we're huge and bombastic and, and out there and other moments it were extremely subdued and, and calm and there's the string trio doing its sort of, you know, beautiful lullaby to you and then all of a sudden, you know, the Kraken <laughs> emerges. <laughs> It's one thing to be part of the process of creating a soundtrack for a game when you hear it digitally through headphones. It's another to walk into a room filled with 50 or 80 musicians and when they play it, the music penetrates you. And I know that when I hear it in the game, I'll have that special moment of connection with it that couldn't have gotten any other way. It's a pretty magical feeling.